Again, in all three cases here, let's erase the algebra question right now. For all three of these functions, for the f function, the g function, and the h function, we would answer this limit question from the graph without lifting the ribbon. So we intentionally are looking at less information because looking at the information the ribbon is currently hiding for us is not helpful to answer the limit question. So what we're doing in all cases is saying, what's going on with the y value? What kind of pattern do we see? How, is, how does the number trend? What, what, why, if you look at points on the graph, as the x value gets closer and closer and closer to 4, what would we predict the y value to be? And that should, in all three of these cases, should be that as we move in, we should predict that the y value would be 3. Here again, we would predict that the y value would be 3. And here as you move in, this way, that way, you'd predict again, by not looking under the ribbon, that the y value would be 3. Looking at what the ribbon is actually hiding is going to add confusion to trying to to, to, to computing what the limit is trying to get at. We're trying to find out what happens nearby. And in fact, of course, a ribbon that's this thick isn't really the right idea. It should be a piece of dental floss, right? But I hope that the ribbon, by being thick enough to see, you get the idea of what's going on here with limits.